Nebuchadnezzar was restored back to his proper place, even when his mind was bound. Elijah was restored, but Saul wasn't. Why wasn't he? See, the other ones did, you know, this stuff wasn't right. Elijah had no business running. He didn't. Uh Uh-uh. Nebuchadnezzar knew he was prideful. But Saul went to another god. Who's your other god? Welcome to Prophetic War and Decree with Prophetess Miranda. Get ready to meet the prophetess, teacher, prophetic coach and mentor as she travels the world sharing the healing power of God. Now, let's join Prophetess Miranda. Break loose. I decree and declare today that you shall break loose. That the struggle is over. That you're no more scraping and trying to figure things out, that enlightenment comes to your mind, that clarity comes to your mind, that you will not receive anything of the enemy, that you're breaking loose, that every day the scales are coming off your eyes. Every day you're getting closer to walking in the perfect will of God. Every day you seek him and you're open for a fresh rain to fall upon you. I decree it to be so today in Jesus' wonderful name. Your first nugget of wisdom that I'm going to give you and knowledge is that you understand that. Let's talk about the life of Jesus. Jesus gave the apostles authority to bind and to loose on the earth. We don't have authority to bind Satan. That's, 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 that's going to be something in Revelation going to be done at the end. But we can bind the works of the enemy here on earth that tried to afflict our lives. See, in Matthew 6 and 18 and 19, Jesus says, You know, he tells Peter, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I give you keys to the kingdom. So when your mind is bound, you have to remember you got authority and God has given us keys to the kingdom. My, 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 my. So what has seduced you that your mind is bound? Is it a spirit of disobedience? You know, Ephesians 2 and 2 says, within this time past, we walk according to the courses of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So what seduced you? Why was it able to seduce you? Come on, think about any mistake you've made. Why was that able to happen? That spirit of disobedience came there. Father, I release your healing anointing. Let it hover in the room, God. Touch, heal, deliver. Who God deliver, God deliver, deliver. Who God touch bodies, touch bodies, touch minds, touch hearts, God. So what has you bound? What ties or soul ties? Has you emotionally tied? Why can't you come to truth? Something's in there. Think about it. Something's in there. Oh, prophet, as you know, she was really there for me, but she's a witch, sweetie. She's a switch. But but prophet, as you know, she really helped me during a hard time. Baby, 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 baby. Her nature, her nature is not. She going to help you here and stick a knife later. But prophetess, I love her. What kind of love is that, baby? She got a knife. She coming for you. She give you an apple, but she's coming to take it back. Philippians 3 and 13 says, let's go to the second part of the scripture. It says, and it says, brothers and sisters, I do not regret myself in having taken hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting the lies that are behind. And reaching forward to what lies ahead. Is it possible that you're looking back? Oh, you can't just, prophet is I can't just let him go. Oh, prophet, oh, I got to have him here, honk. Come on, baby, come in my room, sugar. Come in, come sit at my desk. Come and sit at my desk. I'm going to be your mother today, your pastor, your prophet. And then I'm going to summon the Holy Ghost to come in there and arrest your mind. Ties will make you hold on to bondage. They'll make you hold on to pain. They'll make you 
hurt? Yes, they will. They will. They'll make you think trauma is good. They will. They will. So what has you bound? All right. In Ephesians 1 and 18, I'm reading the King James Version. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what is the riches of the glory in his inheritance. So do you know that when, when you look with new eyes and you're not bound anymore, do you know you have a different understanding? Mm -hmm. You have a different perception. You have ever, ever been being fooled and tricked by somebody, and then they knock on your door, and that day you say, not today, buddy. It's a different perception today. Understanding has made its arrival. You have a different perception. You know, at one time you think, well, this is all I got, so I better hold on to this. Don't know that if you just step one inch behind here, there's a whole big land there. But see, the enemy make you think this all you got. I better hold on to it. It's better than one woman told me. She said, "Well, it's better than no man. It's at least a piece of man." I said, "The devil is a lie." What? And he beat you when? When? But in her mind, this is all she had. She couldn't see beyond it because her perception was twisted. But when you see out of new eyes and see whenever that struggle begins to break and it's no longer, and the shift has come, your understanding is different, your perception is different. Then you also have, you have a different view. See, at one time, see, some of y'all staying on the side. Yeah, y'all over here. So you can't see straight. Because hmm, you're on the side. You can't see straight. But when your perception gets to be right, ooh, and you see from a panoramic view that God takes you up higher, and you go, oh, my God, I've been putting up with all of this? Like what? Oh, my goodness. A different deepness. There's a different deepness, a depth in God that expands your mind. Thank you. There's a different place of deliverance. Now, do you know when you get delivered, you know people don't like you anymore? Did you know that? Yeah, because cause you're not the doormat no more. You, you see, all of a sudden now you got a voice back. See, before you couldn't say nothing. Yes, ma'am. No, no, sir. No. Can you talk? No, no. Mm -mm. But you wake up one day and there's a lion on the inside of you and say, I'm here now. I got a voice. <laughs> I'm not taking this. No, I don't like that. No. They'll be like, what happened, to, what, what happened to him? Did he wake up out the dead or what? No, a giant woke up. That's what happened. Change has come. Change got to come. It's got to come. And you don't make quick decisions. I'm not saying make quick decisions, but you got to change your story. See, if one minute, just think about it. I hear people's story all the time as a life coach. Oh, God, do I hear their story. I, I know their grandma. I know their family like I'm one of their family. I could pull up a chair at the table and say, hey, babies, I know y'all people. I yeah, I can't. Oh, well, we, we, can't, we cousins. I know you. You know, but think about it. They keep telling the story. They hurt me. They did this. They did this. Change your story. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm walking in the new. I got a new walk over here. Come on now. Come change your story. But do you know that if someone else heard your story, do you know they would have a different perspective? They would have a different version. Let's just say you were heard at a church. Do you know somebody might say, well, no, that's not the way that went. Oh, I didn't see that like that. Because remember the level of truth, the level of understanding? Everybody sees it so different. I remember one lady said, she said, when I went to see my pastor, she said, he said, well, I didn't understand that. He said, he didn't understand that. She said, I didn't understand. She said, I said, that wasn't his perspective. I said, you were wounded. I said, but in his mind, he was being like a father or like a shepherd, and he was chastising you. She said, oh, I didn't get that perspective. That was a different perspective. <laughs> but it was her perspective, and it was his perspective.
So you have to understand that somebody's story, somebody's perspective of your, whether it's hurt or not. Do you know most people be hurting and wounding people and abusing people? You know they don't think so? They'll be like, come take my stuff. Had a client in the room and he said, he said, well, you know, she, you know, she's supposed to submit. I say, so wait, hold on. I say, just by chance, I slept a little bit longer today and I'm a little still sleepy a little bit. I say, so you telling me that her come and take more of your abuse. Is that what you're trying to tell me to agree with? I said, I just need to know whether I need to give you your money back or show you the door. I said, so I'm trying to figure which one it is out. So let's repeat this again. He said, no, that's not what I'm saying. I said, that's what you're saying, sweetie. He said, I am? I said, you are. He said, I need deliverance. I said, yes, you do. I got oil. You ready? He said, nobody never told me this. I said, news flash today. So who needs to tell you something today? What? What? What, what are you succumbing to? Because you don't know who you are. So you don't have the faith to believe that God loves you. So in other words, you just use the doormat. I don't believe no man or no woman should be a doormat. God don't want you to be. Baby, it's time for an awakening. You need to walk in who you are. You are the righteous. Do you know pain, healing, and lack of validation? can dictate your version? Yeah, because if you was in pain that day, oh, prophetess, they hurt me, they killed me, they, oh, they tried to kill me. Yeah, if you needed healing that day, well, you know, I was just wounded, okay, so your version gonna be different that day. Well, you know what, I just, you know, I needed them to, so they didn't call my name, you needed validation, baby, why? Tell me why. Oh, come on, come on, it's, change your story. Just change your story. You know, John's gospel tells us that we need to move to a higher realm. It's time to go to a different place. I need you to go to a different place. Do you know sometimes you have to change in who, what you study, how you read the Bible, what Bible you read? Do you know sometimes until you really deliver it, the Bible don't really make sense to you? You do it out of real rituals? But it's not activated, it's not alive. I'm very keen on knowing when the word is activated in a person's life, because there's a different power they walk in. There's a different glory, there's a different favor they walk in. That's how come I know they read the word, but it's not activated. Let's talk about how do you take when elevation to your mind start happening? Oh. Oh, my God, when that mind starts to expand. Do you know, I remember when I, um, it was a time of single mother, and I only had $20 to buy food with, and I had to make that work for a whole week, and that was it. And during that time, I was able to do that. So then I had gotten a job. I had gotten a boss that I had wonderful favor with. And they gave me raises and everything. I used to buy the cheap mayonnaise, the cheap must, um, ketchup. I hate that kind of stuff now, but I just want y'all to know that I've always hated it. But you know, I had I, I, that's where I was, you understand? I know y'all don't want me to say this, but shame the devil. Uh-huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know that my mind was so bound in poverty that I had been, been starting to make triple the amount of money but I was still buying the cheap bread, the cheap mayonnaise that I hated, and the cheap ketchup. And I hated bologna, but I've been buying bologna. And one day I was going out the store and the Lord said, look at your bag. Now look at your account. I didn't realize because my mind was bound. You got to break loose today. That struggle is over. No more bologna. No more cheap, no, no more cheap bread. You can buy bunny bread now. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, bunny bread is good. Oh, y'all laughing at me. <laughs> y'all laughing at me? Bunny bread, you can buy bun. See, some of y'all haven't been there. You don't understand. See, when God is platforming you to go to the nation, he bring you through some valleys. Do you know them valleys is so you can remember yourself? Do you know when I see bunny bread, I still smile? I know y'all don't think that, but I do. I still smile because I remember when. 
I remember when. Oh my God, okay. So when your mind is elevating, you start to feel uncomfortable in yourself because then God start making you get in places where you got to face the people that's hurt you. You got to face the things that you didn't want, the people that you couldn't say anything to. You know the people you go in the room, you go, yes, talk under you. You have to face that. But when your mind start elevating, Wisdom comes, brilliant ideas come, witty ideas come. Your mind expands for wealth and knowledge. Elevation creates a mental change. Levels of breaking loose. The knowledge to remove the mind breaks. See when those minds is breaking? And those blocks are there. How many of you have ever experienced that? Where all of a sudden you're dealing with something and your mind is blocked. Do you know your mind can be blocked because it's a relationship shaped it? Mm -hmm. So you begin to have a mindset or you have behaviors. It was formed out of your environment. Do you know you can get in an environment with certain people and all you think you need to do is smoke and drink? And you go like, yeah, well, that's my environment. I'm in the know. I'm, I'm looking. I look like everybody around me. Your environment can shape you unless you stand for God. Broken relationships can shape you. They can all of a sudden make you think you're not worthy, make you think you're not good enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not strapped enough, you're not financial enough. Trained ways of living. Mama said you do this. Mama said you buy this certain kind of pan to bake a chicken. Doesn't matter if the chicken don't fit it. I don't know. Mama said to do it, so I'm buying that pan. Somebody tells you, do you know that there's a roaster that's bigger that'll fit the chicken? I didn't know that. Mama only told me to buy this pan. I did what I was told because it was my environment. Learn behaviors. You learn to accept stuff. You learn to have thinking patterns. How to see your breakthrough. You can see it through taintedness. You can see that you think you have to accept it. So today, let me give you the process to break through because the struggle is over. Come on, let me hear you say it in your spirit. The struggle is over. Say it in your spirit, man. Come on, just say it. The struggle is over. Oh, my, 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 my. If you say that thing down in your spirit, man, you're going to feel things moving. Because the struggle is over. This is the process of, break, of how to break loose. You break, okay, so breaking loose is going to require your prayer of a longing warrior. See, a warrior, ooh, see, a, a warrior longs for God. And they know how to talk to God. Think about David in the Psalms. He knew how to long for God. So you got to know what to say. A warrior know what to say to move the hand of God. The ungodly agreements will require removal of the attachments. See, now that your mind has been bound up, you got these ungodly attachments that are there. And somebody got to remove them. They got to go. Because if not, you're not going to be able to change. You won't be able to break loose. So tell me what they taught you. These ungodly agreements, things you just agreed to. You, you know, you might say, well, I never said that. No, but you went along with it. There's a whole lot of things I've agreed with and never said one word. But in here, I agreed with it and I allowed it to happen. The detaching process will require fire to remove the attachments. So it's going to take the fire of God to move it because you can't give it up. You can't do it on your own. Think of an abused man, abused by his father. He can't feel like he can detach from his father. He can't. It's going to take the fire of God birthing in him to give him the power to say, this is not right. I can't take care of all these people. It's not right. The detaching will leave obvious holes. Ooh, yes. You know when you have all them attachments? Oh, you got all kind of holes there. So now somebody got to go and fill the holes and fix the holes. This is right, which will require a purifying process to close the holes up. 
See, that's why you gotta go get some help. So you gotta go get somebody and say, look, I got all these holes here. See, because I gotta detach from these people and I got all these holes. I need you to help me to find a God that can fill these holes and, and fill them up. And see, it's gonna take a purifying process. Because you do, do know when you come in agreement with stuff, you've picked up stuff, right? Y'all don't know you picked up stuff? Yeah, you picked up stuff. Stuff you don't even realize you picked up. Till years later, you'd be like, now why I done that? And then I go, oh, I didn't even know I like that. I, well, I don't like that. Why I'm doing that? Because the agreements are there. So the purifying process has got to happen. That's why you go to your pastor or you go to your life coach or your mentor or your counselor and you let them sew those holes up and bring you through a purifying process to get it out. If you don't get purified, you're going to try to go on to healing with stuff in there. Let me make it real for you. You're going to try to go on to healing with all that pus in between all them holes. It's got blood and pus. Let me make it really light for y'all. Y'all, somebody need that. Because it's not purified. You need something to you need something to sanitize it. Mr. Tyler, what they need? Macaricone? I don't know. That's a, oh, oh, yeah, they, yeah, they need antibiotics. Girl, that the power. Antibiotics. They need antibiotics to purify that thing. Yeah. Oh my God. Then you need the love of the Father is needed to remove the scars. Because you know, once the pus come out and it close up, it still got a scar there. But do you know the love of the Father make it so clean it looked like it was never touched? It brings it back to its original intent. Oh, have you ever been wounded? You ever been rejected and betrayed? Oh, and the love of the Father make you so whole like you've never been touched. The love of the Father is needed to remove the scar and to make them full of beauty <laughs> instead of ashes. Then you're going to need an outpour of power. It will be needed to remove the inner bonds. You know, when you get in stuff, you have bonds with people, you know? Come on, you know that. Yeah, you be like all connected to them. Can't go nowhere without them. You need them because they're bonded. But see, sometimes those bondages and that bond, even though whether it's a godly bond or ungodly bond, it presents itself as residue. Have you ever seen anybody who know you know them been delivered, but they still got that residue on them? Like you know they're not in the streets, they're not gangbanging no more, but they still look like a thug. They still look like they'll sling a gun in a minute. But they don't got no gun, they don't have no gun. Like they really done laid the guns down. But the residue is there. Oh, I'm trying to bring it home to somebody. I'm trying to bring it home to somebody. What's your residue? Do you look like you're a rape victim? Do you look like you've been abused? Do you look like you're still wearing poverty? Why? Because the bonds are still there. The people are gone, but the bonds are still there. Okay. Last but definitely not least is you will need flawless faith, which will produce an immaculate glory that will restore you back to the God intent. Ooh, which will then allow you to draw the promised plan of God. Oh, let me say that one again. So this flawless faith is going to cause you to rise up with an immaculate glory. People are not going to even understand. Well, he done woke up from the dead. What is going on? And then all of a sudden they say he done took a whole new life. When did, I remember when, when my brother, I was like, he got scholarships in band when he knew how to play music. Why well, I messed that up. Like, wait, what? He's going all over the country teaching people to do this? I'm like, me and my mom looked at each other. I'm like, well, when did this happen? Why we, how we miss that? Then we see a newspaper ad, and he's in the newspaper. I'm just like, did, did something slip by us or what? Has I been going that long? See, because when that immaculate glory comes, ooh, stuff come back together. Ooh, Minister Tyler come back together. Do you understand? Ooh, and everything they tried to taint, ooh, you come back to that original plan that God had. Because they can't take the original plan. 
They can't take the plan, sweetie. <laughs> the plan is the plan. It is the plan. It is the plan. You might have to go to New York and, you know, North Carolina and around here and around here, but the plan is the plan. So my words to you today, the struggle is over and take the shift. Oh, come on, let's say it. The struggle is over and I'm taking the shift. Today. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. And so shall it and be. So be. Oh, let's give God some glory. Thank you for joining us today. You've just watched the Prophetic War and Decree broadcast with Prophetess Miranda. To learn more about Prophetess Miranda, view her event schedule, so into the ministry, and more, visit us online at prophetessmiranda.com. If you would like to view this message in its entirety, and many more like it, visit Prophetess Miranda's YouTube channel and make sure to subscribe.